So I'm going to show you how Teachers Nearpod works for teachers. Um, you're going to first of all log in with one of your accounts or make an account, sign up. Okay. Um, once you've made your lesson, you'll get the students to log in with this side, but we'll do that in a separate video. Once you're in there, you'll see your library. I am a gold user, so you can see a lot more things. Um, a, a lot more lessons. I've been using it for a long time. But even if you have the free version, which is the silver version, a lot of this will work for that one. Um, you're going to create a lesson in Nearpod. You can also create a lesson in Google Slides, but today we're going to choose the Nearpod one. Once you're in there, you're going to see this slide over here where you're going to choose a title for your lesson. I've chosen Bernoulli because that's what we're going to do today. And from here, you can drag and drop from your desktop or you can click the upload files button this is from your desktop from google drive from dropbox or from your cloud once you've um, uploaded your file it will look something like this and now you can have a look at the powerpoint and decide okay yeah i'm gonna be happy with this one i like this slide i don't like this slide you can remove and take some slides out if you want um and just get rid of them okay then you're going to be able to go to the next slide over here where I'm going to start to add activities so on a normal uh, presentation you would actually kind of read through this and maybe ask the students questions as you go along but with Nearpod you can actually insert your questions beforehand so you're going to go to this um, side menu here and add an activity. The first one you can add is an open-ended question, which is basically, you know, maybe you want to ask them, uh, what do we mean by an ideal fluid? Um, or something like that, just to start off your um, lesson. In the reference, you can actually add an image, a video, something that's in PDF, um, record an audio or select something from the internet, something from the internet. Uh, for a website and also you can record something if you want um, sometimes I put a screenshot of the previous slide from the previous lesson just to remind them of you know this particular question what an ideal fluid is and over here there's a timer which you can add and they will have this much time to complete the activity normally with um, I try to put timer on most of the time because obviously we are you know we're obviously uh, not short of time but you know we're, we're kind, kind of trying to always beat the clock so anyway once you've done that you've added a question you'll then see it appear in here I didn't save that question it's okay I'll just put something else there um, so that was an open-ended question the other one that you can put at the beginning of the lesson is the poll the poll is like another quick question but this time um, the students get to um, choose so what is an ideal fluid sorry about the spelling ideal fluid Okay, and then you can put your answers there. You can add more answers if you want. Um, use this button here to change it if there was a formula. Again, you can add any kind of reference that you want or a timer to make sure that they all answer on time. And then click save. And once you click save, you'll see that slide appear in there. Once it's appeared in there, that means that you'll be presenting this, You'll they'll see this, and then they'll actually get a, a poll to answer. Um, when you're doing this in the classroom, it's nice to have the results of the poll. Um, you can share with them, um, but I'll show you that when I show you how to present the lesson. Okay, moving on. Um, somewhere else in the slide, I've decided that I want to add another activity. Now, this one might be something called matching pairs. Because as you can see in there, I was asking them about the type of energy. So I might write here, for example, potential energy. And then I might write the definition of potential energy. Um, I'm just going to write that for now. Um, and then you can do the next pair and the next pair. And then basically they will just have to add. They'll Once they log in, they will have to see, they'll see the keyword and they've got to see what the definition is and then they've got to match them together. That's a nice activity just to remind them of something that they've probably done before. Um, I'll just put in here kinetic energy and random. So we've got two pairs. Okay, and then save that. 
So when you play this lesson, they'll be able to play that activity as well. Another nice activity to put in there is um, fill in the blanks, especially if you want them to write some kind of note. So, you know, um, you can cut and paste from your PowerPoint itself, okay? Or you can um, write your own words in there. So for example, I'm just gonna write, the chair is brown and then you actually click on the word to choose what goes into this word bank on the side there uh, one thing to remember here is don't repeat the words that are in here because if they're repeated then um, they've got to choose the exact version of chair that needs to go on this side so it's better just to have one version in each one and once you've clicked done then again they're going to have this activity there so you've got fill in the blanks now another good thing about Nearpod is you can add content so if there's something that you've forgotten you can add another slide to show them you know maybe explain something a bit further add a few more pictures whatever you want to do they have some awesome things called this one is Nearpod 3D so if there's any of these things that are you know they go with your lesson you can actually look at this one for example um, let's have a look at a mosquito and you click done and this mosquito will now be a 3d version in their um, nearpod you'll see that when i do the presentation one um, moving on there's also a lovely little app there called simulations from FET, which i'm sure most of us have used before science teachers especially but they've also got some good maths applications in here as well and then you choose the level and you choose one of the activities so we're just going to choose a very simple one um let's do that one bending light and then we're going to add that into our nearpod um obviously these particular things don't really go with the particular lesson that i'm showing you but it's nice to see how it all works so for example you can go to a field trip on literally anywhere you just type in here where you want to go um, let's have a look at China, seeing as that's why we're all doing online learning. Um, so you can go for a field trip somewhere in China. If that's, um, you know, there was a, a time when they did something called the Big Right in um, the children's school that my kids used to go to, where they used to kind of set the scene for them and, you know, um, try and explain, you know, um, try to kind of... Uh, motivate them into writing about something that you know kind of giving them some inspiration um, within their their lesson um, so this is a really good thing for English where they can actually see what China looks like you know see what what's going on over there and they can actually um, you know get some really good content from the students that way um, a sway I haven't really used a lot but basically you can choose something that is about a particular topic so for example they'll have chosen something like Barack Obama and it will just have loads of information about him it will literally be another kind of booklet about him let's say mini booklet you could call it and then um, the last thing that I want to just do over here, the memory test is just like the matching pairs, but with the memory test, they actually have the, um, the keyword and the definition, and they've got to remember where it is. So they'll, they'll turn over one by one. I think most of us have played this game when we were younger, so we'll know what it is. And from here, you can choose whether you want to make it harder or easier. Um, I'm not going to do that for now. i um, just going to add one more thing in here, which is the um, quiz. So if you uh, want to add a quiz inside your Nearpod, sometimes you can add a quiz of like two, three questions. Sometimes you can add five or six questions, depending on what, what you actually want to assess. Um, it works the same way as putting in the poll questions, but except with this one, you've got to choose what the right answer is. Um, and if you're doing maths or science, you can always duplicate your question, so you're not keep on type. You don't have to keep on typing the same question over and over again. Um, in this one, you can also add references, as you can see from over here. I'm just going to press cancel on this one. Um, you can also do another fun activity which is called time to climb which is very similar to the quiz 
So since they're very, very similar, you can actually take your quiz and convert it into a time to climb. Time to climb is another activity which I will show you when we do the student pace lesson. Um, where you actually see the students once they've logged in you can see them actually climbing up this hill so if they get the answer right they get to climb up the hill if they get the answer wrong they don't um, so it's nice it's kind of like a race again and it works the same way as the quiz so you can just put your um, you know you can put your images as a question as one of the options or you can put text and it works the same way as the quiz uh, you can change a quiz into a time to climb as well to save you time because when you do a student pace lesson the time to climb won't work but the um, quiz will work so if you turn a lesson into student pace later on um, you'll be able to use the same thing again um, and I think I've gone through all of them let me just double check oh yeah the last one is collaborate where you can actually put in a topic, so maybe at the beginning or the end of the lesson, maybe you want to brainstorm, you want to review what you've done earlier, you want the students to come up with, you know, what did they learn, so you might say, what did you learn today, kind of thing, um, and you just choose one of these um, designs, and you press save, I will show you that in the student pace lesson as well so as you can see that's how you just basically make up your lesson um, it's pretty self-explanatory but if you do have any questions you can always contact me um, and let me know if there are any questions but that is how you create your Nearpods um, for student learning once you've done your Nearpod, you can save it. That's the title. You can put tags in there for people to find the lesson later on. And you choose what grade it's for. I'm just going to randomly choose. And then um, the subject, I'll just put science. I'm not going to actually save this lesson. I'm going to delete it later on anyway. Once it's made, you'll see it over here. And in the next video, you'll see me actually uh, showing you how to do the lesson.